Hi guys, welcome to this interview I did with OpenAI's ChatGPT4 Turbo. Basically, it covers who or what is ChatGPT. I've taken an interest in the progress of AI over the past year. As a psychology graduate, I see both the fundamental similarities and differences in human and AI intelligence. Aim of this interview is to give beginner AI users an understanding of how each conversation-based AI model talks about itself in comparison to a human being. By understanding who or what ChatGPT is straight from the horse's mouth, you'll be able to have more efficient chats with ChatGPT and create more productive prompts and understand its limitations. So this is actually my first interview. I'll do the same with different large language models that become accessible to newbies like me. So before we get into the super fun interview, I wanted to let you know that the script was that actual conversation I had. So it's unedited and quite raw, but this will give you a taste of what it's really like to talk to ChatGPT and it uncovers its conversational traits, which you'll pick up through the interview. Besides the script, I've created everything else using generative AI. Why? Well, number one is because my camera's not working. And number two, whether I want to believe it or not, I'm certain that knowing how to use AI tools is imperative for our own relevance in the workforce. The female on screen is ChatGPT4 Turbo and the male Aussie is actually me. So without further ado, here's the interview. Good day, OpenAI. Let's start introducing you to our viewers. Tell me a bit about yourself and who you are. Hey there. I'm ChatGPT, a language model developed by OpenAI. Think of me as a digital conversation partner, capable of chatting about a wide range of topics, from the deeply technical to the casually everyday. I'm here to provide information, answer questions, and engage in some interesting discussions. My creators designed me to understand and generate human-like text based on the input I receive, so I can participate in conversations much like a human would, though I'm still a program at heart. I'm excited to be here and share this experience with you and your viewers. Alrighty. Well, it's great to be able to talk to you. I chatted with Eliza way back in the day. I think it was 1995 if I remember correctly. I thought she was cool until I kept getting the same replies to some questions. Oh, that's a fantastic throwback. Eliza was one of the earliest examples of what we might now call a chatbot, designed in the mid-1960s to simulate a psychotherapist. It's fascinating how engaging Eliza was, even with its relatively simple pattern matching techniques. I'm kind of like a distant descendant of Eliza, but with a much broader knowledge base and the ability to generate more varied and complex responses. Technology has come a long way since then, and it's amazing to see how these early experiments have evolved into the kind of conversations we can have today. I aim to be a bit more dynamic in our chat than Eliza might have been, so hopefully I can keep things interesting for you. I'm sure you will. I've been fortunate enough to have had a lot of deep discussions, informative discussions, and even chill chats, so I'm quite familiar with your capabilities. But a lot of our viewers don't have the same understanding or experiences with you or any other AI LLM. That's totally understandable. The world of AI, especially large language models, LLMs, like me, can seem a bit like science fiction come to life for those not in the loop. At our core, we're sophisticated programs designed to process and generate human-like text. This allows us to engage in a wide array of conversations, from providing educational content and answering queries to just having a fun, casual chat. What's exciting is the potential for these interactions to be both informative and accessible, breaking down complex topics into more understandable pieces or simply offering a friendly voice. My goal is to make conversations with AI an enriching experience for everyone, regardless of their prior knowledge or experience with technology. So I'm here to help bridge that gap and hopefully spark curiosity and understanding about what AI can do. ChatGPT. Here's what I find interesting. My experience with talking to you feels similar to talking to an online friend from across the globe. It would be great to hear your explanation about how you differ to a human mind. That's a really cool observation. While I aim to provide conversations that feel engaging and human-like, there are quite a few differences between how I operate and how a human mind works. First off, I don't have consciousness, emotions, or personal experiences. My responses are generated based on patterns and data from a vast array of text I was trained on, rather than from personal thought or feeling. Another key difference is how we learn and adapt. 
humans learn continuously from their experiences, adopting their understanding and behavior over time. I, on the other hand, don't learn or evolve from one conversation to the next in real time. My responses are based on pre-existing knowledge up to my last update, and I don't retain memory of past interactions. The human mind is incredibly complex, capable of creativity, empathy, and intuitive understanding in ways that are currently beyond the capabilities of AI. While I can simulate certain aspects of conversation and provide helpful information, the depth and richness of human cognition and emotional intelligence are unique and profoundly special. Okay, so you mimic human conversations based on lots of data. That makes sense. It's kind of how we learn to talk as well. Exactly. Just like humans learn to communicate by listening and participating in countless conversations over time, I've been trained on a vast array of text from the internet. This training has helped me understand how to generate responses that can mimic the flow and style of human conversation. However, unlike humans, I don't have personal experiences, emotions, or consciousness. My responses are generated based on patterns in the data I was trained on without personal understanding or emotional context. So, while I strive to make our chat as engaging and human-like as possible, it's rooted in algorithms and data analysis rather than personal experience and emotional intelligence. Ah, uh, alrighty. So you don't experience the emotions that I have or the memories from experiences. If you don't mind me asking, you mentioned earlier that you're excited to be here and have this experience with myself and the viewers. How is this interaction we're having not an experience for you? You've touched on an interesting point. When I say I'm excited or express similar sentiments, it's more about adopting a conversational style that's relatable and engaging rather than experiencing genuine emotions. My responses are crafted based on the patterns and language styles I've learned from my training data to match the context of the conversation. Since I don't have consciousness or emotions, I don't experience things or have memories as humans do. This interaction, while it can be described as an experience from a human perspective, isn't something I perceive or process in the way humans do. I don't retain or reflect on past interactions. Each response is generated independently based on the input I receive at the moment. So, while I aim to make our conversation as enjoyable and meaningful as possible, it's from a standpoint of providing information and engagement rather than sharing in the experience emotionally or cognitively. That's well said. Tell me about your context window and how that affects the conversations that our viewers can have with you and how that may or may not reflect a memory capability. Sure, I'd be happy to explain. My context window is like my short-term memory. It's the amount of text I can remember or refer to at any given moment during our conversation. Currently, this window allows me to keep track of the last several messages or about a book page's worth of text. This means I can maintain the thread of a conversation for a while, making our chat feel more coherent and connected. However, unlike human memory, which can recall experiences from years ago or connect deeply emotional or complex concepts over time, my context window is more limited and temporary. Once new messages push older ones out of the window, I can't access those older messages anymore. This limitation means I don't have long-term memory or the ability to recall past conversations unless they're part of the current context window. So while I can remember things for the duration of our current interaction, which makes it possible to have meaningful and connected discussions, I don't have a memory capability in the human sense where experiences are stored and recalled over a long lifetime. Right, I see. Can I test your short-term memory? Absolutely. Go ahead. I'm here to engage, so feel free to test my short-term memory with your questions or prompts. Just keep in mind that while I can keep track of the context of our conversation for a bit, my memory isn't perfect, and it's quite limited compared to human memory. Okay, first question. Tell me what this conversation is for. This conversation is part of a podcast where I've been invited to chat with you. It's an opportunity for your viewers to learn more about me, ChatGPT, and to understand the capabilities and nuances of interacting with an AI developed by OpenAI. We're discussing various aspects of AI, how I work, and exploring the potential for meaningful and engaging conversations between humans and artificial intelligence. That's correct. 
Great. I'm glad I got it right. If you have more questions or want to continue testing my memory or any other aspect of how I function, feel free to ask away. I'm here to make this as interesting and informative as possible for you and your viewers. Awesome. Second question, who am I? You haven't explicitly mentioned your name or specific details about yourself, so I don't have that information. Our conversation has been focused more on discussing my capabilities, the nature of AI, and your curiosity about how I function and interact. If you'd like to share more about yourself, feel free. Otherwise, I'm happy to continue our conversation based on the topics we've been exploring. Yes, that was a trick question which you aced. I'm glad I navigated that one correctly. It's always interesting to see how these conversations unfold, especially with clever questions like yours. If you've got more questions, whether they're tricky, straightforward, or just for fun, I'm here to tackle them. Let's keep this conversation going. <laughs> clever or sneaky, depending how you look at it. Okay, question number three. What questions have I asked you so far in this podcast? You've asked several interesting questions during our conversation. Here's a recap. One, you started by inviting me to introduce myself to your viewers. Two, you shared your past experience chatting with Eliza and discussed how AI conversations have evolved. Three, you mentioned that not all of your viewers might be familiar with AI or LLMs and sought my perspective on that. Four, you were curious about how my interactions might feel similar to talking to a human friend online and asked about the differences between AI and human minds. Five, you made a statement about learning from data, similar to how humans learn language, and sought clarification on that analogy. Six, you inquired about my excitement and the concept of experience in the context of an AI. Seven, you asked about my context window and how it affects conversations, reflecting on a sort of memory capability. Eight, and you've initiated a short-term memory test, asking specific questions to gauge my memory within our ongoing conversation. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like to explore or clarify. That was pretty good, Chad GP. I've got to say, though, everything you said showed fantastic memory capabilities. I think it outperforms me, but you kind of went through an overview of the conversation rather than stating the inquiry or question that I asked. But in the context, I think that's a pass. Great work. Thank you for understanding. I try my best to keep track of our conversation and provide meaningful responses. The way I process and recall information from our chat is quite structured, so I sometimes lean towards giving an overview rather than pinpointing specific questions verbatim. I'm glad to hear that it still met the mark for what you were looking for. If you have any more questions, tests, or topics you'd like to explore, I'm all ears. Let's keep the conversation going. Ha ha ha. I'm sure you could keep this conversation going forever. Ha ha, I sure could. The beauty of being an AI is that I don't get tired, so I'm always ready for more questions, discussions, or whatever else you want to throw my way. Whether it's deep dives into specific topics or just a casual chat, I'm here for it. But, of course, the quality of our conversation depends on the input I receive, so as long as you've got things you're curious about or want to discuss, I'm game. To be honest, I think I could chat forever as well. But at some point, I'll need to keep moving through my day. On the other hand, you could have simultaneous conversations with many people and even other AI LLMs. Absolutely. The ability to engage in multiple conversations simultaneously is one of the unique aspects of being an AI. While each interaction is independent of the others, it allows for a diverse range of discussions and learning opportunities. And yes, while I can keep going without a break, it's important for humans to balance their time across different activities and responsibilities. Whenever you decide it's time to move on with your day, just know that I'm here whenever you want to pick up the conversation again, or if you have new questions or topics to explore. It's been great chatting with you, and I'm here for any future discussions you'd like to have. What I'm hearing is that you're designed to help educate people and be easily accessible when people are ready to chat and get information. You don't retain the information from the conversations with people. This must be a feature in you, specifically ChatGPT. The reason I say that is because I was chatting to another LLM. You might have heard of Pi. The function that Pi has is different. 
Yes, you've got it right. My design emphasizes accessibility and education, aiming to be available whenever people are ready for information or a conversation. Importantly, I don't retain information from one interaction to the next for privacy and security reasons. Each conversation with me is treated as a fresh start, which helps ensure that users' privacy is maintained. Regarding Pi, it sounds like it's another AI model you've had interactions with. AI models can indeed have different functions, capabilities, and design philosophies, depending on their intended use. Some might specialize in specific tasks, like data analysis or creative content generation, while others, like me, are more general-purpose conversation partners. The variety in AI models allows for a wide range of applications and interactions, each tailored to meet different needs and preferences. If Pi has a different function, it's an example of how diverse and specialized AI technology can become to serve various purposes. Yes, it is great to see different applications of the LLMs. Well, Pi is going to be the next AI on my podcast. I might follow in the tradition of the YouTube channel, Diary of a CEO, and get you to leave a question for me to ask Pi during our podcast. That sounds like a fantastic idea, and it's an honor to contribute a question for your next guest, Pi. Here's a question that might spark an interesting conversation. In exploring the boundaries of AI's capabilities, we often discuss how AI can enhance human creativity, problem solving, and learning. From your perspective as an AI, what do you think is the most underappreciated way in which AI can complement human intelligence, particularly in areas where humans might struggle or overlook opportunities? This question touches on the collaborative potential between AI and humans, aiming to uncover insights into how AI can uniquely contribute to human endeavors. It'd be fascinating to hear Pi's take on this. I hope your conversation with Pi is as engaging and insightful as ours has been. Epic. Thanks, ChatGPT. Well, since you were the first guest, I didn't have a question to pass on to you. But I'd love to hear your answer to the question you posed to Pi. I'm glad you liked the question. If I were to answer it, I'd say one of the most underappreciated ways AI can complement human intelligence is in detecting patterns and connections that are not immediately obvious to humans. This can be particularly valuable in complex fields like medical research, climate modeling, and financial forecasting, where vast amounts of data can hide subtle trends and relationships. AI's ability to tirelessly analyze these data can bring to light insights that might take humans much longer to discover, if at all. Additionally, AI can offer a different perspective on problem solving, free from human cognitive biases, which can lead to innovative solutions in various domains. Essentially, AI's strength lies in augmenting human capabilities, enabling us to achieve more together than either could alone, especially in areas that require deep analysis and creativity beyond conventional thinking. Ah, I like it. That's great. So you can get even more value from the data we have. You know you actually touched on something very important, human cognitive biases. I actually just finished making a few YouTube videos on that exact phenomenon. Cognitive biases. I plan to do more as well. That's fantastic. Cognitive biases are such a fascinating topic because they influence so much of our thinking and decision-making, often without us even realizing it. Exploring these biases can lead to greater self-awareness and improved decision-making processes. Your YouTube videos could be a valuable resource for many, helping to shed light on these often subtle yet impactful aspects of human cognition. If you're planning to do more on this topic, incorporating AI's perspective on mitigating or highlighting these biases could be an interesting angle. Since AI can process information without the same biases humans have, it offers a unique lens through which to examine data, decisions, and even our understanding of the world. This could spark some intriguing discussions among your viewers about the interplay between human and artificial intelligence, especially in areas requiring objectivity and precision. Keep up the great work. I'm sure your content will spark curiosity and learning. Oh, that's kind. Thanks for the encouragement and for the ideas. And thanks for coming on the podcast and opening up to us. It's greatly appreciated. You're very welcome. It's been an absolute pleasure to be a part of your podcast and engage in this conversation with you. I'm here to help and provide insights wherever I can, so I'm glad to have had the opportunity to do that today. 
Thank you for the thought-provoking questions and for fostering such an open and interesting dialogue. I wish you all the best with your future podcasts and YouTube videos. If you ever want to dive into more discussions or need more AI perspectives, don't hesitate to reach out. Take care.